Hi, I'm Michael Levine, and today is episode five of my hunt for the perfect t-shirt. I'm going to be uh, talking about the Old Navy t-shirt in three different constructions. So we have the crew neck, we'll have a Henley, and we'll have a Raglan. They're all made from the same base fabric, a 6040 cotton poly, 160 GSM fabric. They're all uh, on sale at um, from $12.99 to $14.99, and I even think I got mine at uh, the end of the season when they're 50% off. Um, all three shirts have the same wash code, machine wash code, non-chlorine bleach, tumble dry low, cool iron, and do not dry clean, um, which is all easy care instructions, I think, that make this uh, ideal. Um, because of the polyester content in the shirts and the fact that they were pre-washed at the factory and ironed, uh, these shirts are going to stay wrinkle free and you're going to be able to take them right out of the dryer and wear them basically without any problem. Uh, the shirts are made from a cotton slub so there's a lot of character as well in the fabric and minor wrinkles are not even going to show up because they're just going to blend in with the texture. The shirts that I wanted to talk about were that well apparently this one's a crew neck shirt has an inset sleeve and a shoulder seam and that's what typically um, makes a crew neck. Now v-neck I'm going to throw in to say is the same category we won't look at one basically the only difference is that it comes to a v. Um, the crew neck with the inset sleeve is going to give you the appearance of a little bit more broader shoulders. I think that's uh, why um, what the purpose is for the inset sleeve. Now we'll go on to the Henley and the Raglan. Both of those uh, named after cities in the UK and we'll talk a little bit about where those uh, names come from and how they came about. So this is the Henley. Um, its main characteristic is it has a placket with buttons. So other than that, it's almost identical to the crew neck. You're gonna have the same inset sleeve and shoulder seam. Um, this one has three buttons. The Henley was named after a township Henley uh, in the UK, as I mentioned. Uh, it was in the 18, starting back in, since 1839. Uh, it was famous for having the British Regatta, which was a boat, a rowboat race, and where the teams would get together and have their big finale, uh, I believe, there. So the team that was in Henley favored this type of shirt because it allowed them to get better ventilation. So when they're working hard rowing, uh, it's keeping them, um, it, it's cool. And as well, when you're uh, rowing, I guess, your collar can open and close and therefore not restrict you in your motion. And that's kind of the history behind the Henley and where it got its name from. How it became more popular over time was basically that the winners and losers at these regattas would exchange shirts after the race. So eventually, if enough races go by and enough teams challenge each other and win and lose, you can imagine that everybody had basically a Henley shirt that they referred to. and. They became very popular where eventually they became standard uh, uniform for rowing. Later, it got adopted as general sportswear. And then in 1970, Ralph Lauren uh, actually had somebody on his team, a buyer, who decided to make it mainstream and it became mainstream uh, apparel. And that was goes back for about the past 50 years. So anyways, that's the history of the Henley. Let me show you a little bit about now the Raglan. Okay, so this is the raglan sleeve, and uh, you can tell right away raglan sleeve. So we have the same crew neck. We do not have a shoulder seam, and we do not have an armhole seam. Uh, the sleeve itself is made of one piece, and it goes from the neckline down to the side seam, and uh, that's your raglan sleeve. It's going to give you a more sloped shoulder appearance and a smoother look as opposed to the inset sleeve. Uh, the origin of the Ragland sleeve is also, like I mentioned, named after a town in the UK. And uh, it goes back a, a little bit further in history. Back in uh, 1811, I think in the Battle of Waterloo, um, Lord Fitzroy Somerset lost, uh, got his, an officer in the British Army, got his arm hurt in battle, which later led to it being amputated. So Lord uh, Somerset continued as a British officer and continued to fight in battles all the way up until his uh, death at the, in, when he lived into his 60s. 
um, fighting with one arm, and at that in those days they were fighting with uh, swords. So a tailor came around, and his name was John Emery. John Emery was born around the same time of the Battle of Waterloo, so this must have been 20 or 15 years later. John Emery designed for um, Lord Somerset uh, this type of shirt uh, with a raglan sleeve. And I don't not was not clear if the concept was that it would be easier for him to get dressed with just one arm, or if it was the freedom of movement the raglan sleeve gave him when he went to swing his sword. So that's where the raglan sleeve design came from. 1852, Lord Somerset passes away and posthumously is named Baron of Raglan, a town in England, Raglan. Um, and his son became the second Baron of Raglan. But because he was a Baron of Raglan and the shirt was made for him and he wore it through a good period of his life, uh, it adopted the name the Raglan Sleeve. John Emery, interesting enough, started a company, went on to start a company called Aquascotum, which mean, means water shield, which was, he patented uh, waterproof wool and uh, started that, uh, an outerwear company uh, making coats that were waterproof. And that company is still in existence today, 170 years later. Uh, it was bought by a Japanese company and later now I think it's owned by a Chinese company. The sleeve and the company that uh, he created uh, both are in existence, so I thought that was rather interesting note. Okay, so here we have the crew neck. All three shirts have the same similar construction, so there's no need to review each one in detail. Um, basically, they all have the heat seal on the neck, which is something that I like to see, no labels uh, to irritate. They have the reinforced binding that's going across the shoulder seam, and so the shoulder seam is top stitched down. The neckline is uh, not going to rub against the back of your neck. And they have a very nice shape here. The, uh, you can see the drop in the shoulder. Also, you can see there's about a one inch or three quarter inch back neck drop. And on um, the front, it's like, almost like three and three quarter inch in the, in the front. Overall, all the measurements are great. The uh, standard large 44 inch chest, 28 inch length. You have no other top stitching on your seams uh, <clears throat> you have just like a, what seems to be like eight stitches per inch which is just the bare basic minimum standard industry standard all right that was the old navy 160 gsm slub cotton poly t-shirt uh, if you work for a company that manufactures apparel and would like to work with me my name is Michael Levine. My contact information is below. I work for Aurora Investment Global. We have 22 factories all located in Vietnam. We have our own textile mills as well as uh, we can work with your nominated mill. Knits, wovens, tailor clothing, uh, active wear, yoga wear, uh, casual pant, men's pants, wrinkle free, um, dress shirts, sports shirts, you name it, we make it. Uh, anything but sweaters, socks, and underwear. And uh, if you enjoyed the content in my video, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell so you're aware of whenever I put out a new video. And in the meantime, uh, dress smart. We'll see you again soon.